Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be able to talk to you here today. And you may wonder what a British guy is doing here in India at a Women in Design track, urging you to focus your UX work on village women in India. So hopefully this short talk is going to make it clear. But personally, I always feel that life has got a strong sense of irony, and so that I find myself here just as another, another moment of the humor of life. But mainly, I want to talk about this amazing world of UX, which is right on your doorsteps. And what I'm proposing to you is that if you engage with it fully, you will become a UX genius. I used to be a senior design researcher at Microsoft, where I got to work on some large, fun projects. I was the design research lead for the Connected Car project. I worked on MSN, a bit of Microsoft.com homepage on the massive B2B websites for the Microsoft partner ecosystem, and even a little bit on HoloLens. But then I took a sabbatical. I more or less retired. I was kind of done in somewhat the rat race of UX. Uh, I've really enjoyed my time at Microsoft and my time in the field. But there's a certain point at which you're pushing further and further, and you have to stop and step back and go, what are the products, what are the projects that mean the most to me? We all have only a limited amount of time on our hands. What's the projects then, I ask you, that are going to make you feel the most fulfilled? It may well be comfort tech, technology to make comfortable people even more comfortable. It may be technology to help businesses be more efficient, you know, even a 1% increase in the efficiency of uh, bug prediction in software can save millions of gallons of fuel a year. There's real value there. There's a lot of different projects you could be working on, and you're at a critical moment, I say here at UX in India, whereas when you set the vision for what UX is about, are you going to be following Hollywood and Silicon Valley? Or is that kind of maybe one or two steps behind playing catch up? That's definitely one option, but you have another option right on your door. And this is something which lured me to India, because now I work and teach here at Dambarata University in Kerala as part of Amachi Labs. Amachi Labs is a multidisciplinary research and development group that focuses mostly on technology for women's empowerment projects. We have designed technology to help skills training, but more than that, the team is part of an organization which actually takes it to the villages. In this picture, we see our van, one of our vans, which goes where other teams can't go. To make technology work for sustainability, you really have to have boots on the ground. You can't throw technology at difficult social situations and expect it to get better. You have to take it there. You have to work very sensitively to see how it's going to fit into people's lives. The ecosystem of Indian villages, as I'm sure many of you know, is extremely fragile. And yet, I'm told, it's the foundation of India. It needs people in the field making the technology work for it to be successful. So when the team goes there, they like to roll their sleeves up and do some hands-on work. And here's an example of the sorts of things that we work on in terms of cutting-edge tech. Many women already work as day laborers, getting day laborer rates. With a bit of training, they can get a certificate from the government that they are formerly plumbers or masons. They make twice as much money and have a lot more status than in the family and in the community. And it's been quite well proven that increasing uh, the availability, the uh, resources of women in the family has a net positive effect on the village and the community as a whole. What you're looking at here is a force feedback haptic device which helps skills training for sawing pipes. If you want to be a plumber, or a mason, you've got to saw PVC pipes, metal pipes, different kinds of pipes. Now, you can do this well if you get the hang of how you put your body and your shoulder behind it, how you align your eye along the blade. We found that women felt much more comfortable with this intermediary step of training rather than picking up the heavy tools to begin with. So this was an example of the type of innovation that came out of Amachi Labs by focusing on the needs of village women. Nowhere else in the world uses haptic training for this. Most other applications of haptic training are for very affluent first world issues like complicated surgeries or NASA training. 
This technology, though, was used in the opposite end of the spectrum, in rural villages out in the back of beyond in India. For me, I find this incredibly beautiful, and that's why I'm here. So in these villages, there may be TV, but there's often no toilets. And a lack of toilets, uh, open defecation, has problems. It has problems for health when it leaches into water sources. It has problems for women's sexual safety. Many assaults can happen at the times of day where women go are able to use a toilet, which is often before dawn. So toilet building and training women to build toilets is part of the skills training we've been using technology for. There's a lot of aspects to this. It's very hands-on, and there's also some theoretical components. And Amachi Labs has been working on how do you help women learn to build toilets. But beyond that, how do you train women to become plumbers? This was a really fun project. It happened before I joined. I'm just a new boy here in the team. Uh, but we were able to graduate India's first women plumbers. Now, I find it hard to imagine that you really could have India's first women plumbers, but I'm told, yes, they really were India's first women plumbers. <laughs> yeah, it's for the women, right? <laughs> we also try tablet-based learning in various forms. We teach soft skills, uh, we teach uh, vocational skills and skills for living. Now, in terms of some of the uh, life skills, there's a lot of abuse of women that happens because women are not told their government entitlements. They are not told what, what their various property rights are. With access to that information, they're able to make more informed decisions, which again makes an enormous difference, not just for the women's life, but for the family and the community's life. Vocational skills include sewing, artificial jewelry making, soap making, and one of the from projects we did with our collaborators resulted in a Kickstarter campaign where the women were able to raise a lot of money by selling their really rather cute crafts. But it's not easy to do educational technology in a village. I started my career as a research fellow in educational technology at the UK Open University back in the day, mentoring under a wonderful woman, Josie Taylor and Agnes Gakulska Holm. If you're trying to teach people something, it's one thing if we have this nice room, which is more or less free of distractions. Imagine if you had a bunch of your kids were running around this room right now as well, and a bunch of old men were kind of coming over and looking over your shoulders and peering into your face and seeing what you're up to. And maybe some of your husbands uh, were floating by, maybe half of them drunk too. There's a lot of distraction in that type of environment. It is hard to make educational technology work in a village where the family is a constant presence. Also, you don't have a regular classroom hours. You can come and get into a rhythm of learning. Your life is based on an agricultural timetable, and at certain parts of the year, your all day long is spent in the fields. An amazing challenge is that, how do you design a UI for people who can't read, who have very low literacy? Yet this is the case with a lot of uh, a lot of our users. It creates the need to be very inventive in how you work that. Additionally, the low digital literacy is the problem because for us, we can find facts as soon as we like with our cell phones, with our smartphones. But again, when you're talking about government entitlements, prices, fair prices for your products, the ability to pick up a smartphone and use it effectively makes a massive difference in these women's lives. We're also talking about a very intense cultural and religious uh, settings. Now, across India, the villages vary enormously in the culture and the religion, as you know better than I, but in almost all places, it is something held. It's a value system and a reality tunnel which is held very intensively and is probably intensely different to what uh, highly educated urbanites, probably like most of us, have in our lives. This, again, makes for a unique challenge for doing UX in this context. So, it's against that background that I'm going to propose six reasons how you will become a genius if you focus your UX on this secret cutting edge that you have on your back door, doing UX for rural village women here in India. Firstly, there is a real need. This is not comfort tech to make the comfortable more comfortable. There's 500 million Indians lacking basic education. The 21st century requires different survival skills. 
which these people need. Women and children continue to be a highly vulnerable and highly underserved. Now, going back to Dan's talk, his opening keynote yesterday, he pointed out, go find big UX challenges. And you've heard other people saying, you know, go out, find big UX challenges. Please, if somebody could find a larger UX challenge than this, come tell me. I had a chance to mentor under Arnie Lund when I was at Microsoft. He's a wonderful uh, UX leader as the field overall. Uh, he's now one of the UX heads at GE. And his advice to me was always, Alexander, if you want to get promoted, you have to go find and solve the big problems. And that's what I'm putting to you. If you want to get promoted, if you want your career to really go somewhere, not because necessarily somebody's going to overtly reward you, but because life itself is going to lift you up, find the big challenges, please. You don't have to play catch up with Silicon Valley or this kind of goofy technology which emerges out of uh, the uh, consumer electronics show. There's a lot more interesting challenges to work on. And so the first aspect of genius I'm proposing to you is that you identify where the cutting edge really is. Identify where the large problems really are. There's intense constraints, low literacy, high distraction environments, a fragile social situation. Creati constraints breed creativity. And you have this wonderful concept of Jugad in India of being able to do more with less. So this is already a strength of the community here. But I put it to you, if you want Navy SEALs level skills or MacGyver level skills or just to hone your ability to find ingenious solutions, then again, the intense multifaceted constraints of doing UX work for rural India offers you that opportunity to develop that kind of genius, to find innovative solutions to hard problems. But more importantly than that, it's not that you would just get good at doing UX for village works. The types of innovations that you would find by doing UX work for villages are going to be applicable more broadly, right? The types of solutions you can find there are the sorts of things which can go global. This may be a subtle point, but I'm sure at least half of you have got it. There are major cultural differences, a complex social structure, very different value system, and frankly, frequent exposure to intense human suffering. Empathy, as in Chloe's wonderful workshop earlier today, empathy is something you get to develop. Compassion, insight. Now, we all know what it is when work drives us to be hard-hearted. We all have colleagues who seem to have turned a corner and rather given up on growing as humans with a soft, warm, juicy heart. Somehow they may be very successful, but they become hard, too hard around the edges. Whereas life somehow invites us to become beautiful by being very beautifully hearted in what we do. And this relationship with people from such a different culture, with such a different life experience, is an opportunity to develop that genius. And so you see, I'm not talking about genius in the sense of being able to solve a Rubik's Cube in one second or do maths problems in your head. For me, a genius is much about intelli intelligence, but also emotional intelligence. Tell me, if you can find a problem which will help you develop more emotional intelligence in this, let me know. And of course, they will teach you. I, people have been reminding me that Steve Jobs said, you learn intuition by going to India. Certainly, as I've come in now as salary member of an Indian university, I've discovered there's a different way of planning things which happens in India, which I'm told is called intuitive. I'm just flowing with that one. But you will learn different life skills, different perspectives, practical knowledge, ancient knowledge, and a sense of resilience from your relationship with these women. It will change you. You will grow. And even more than that, you have to put it all together. This isn't just one type of project where it's, there's some very hard little bit of the user base to figure out or some technology project or some bit of the business which is really stuck. This is a difficult problem. It's not for everybody here. If you just want to grow and you know, come up with some cool tech, that's probably what you should stick with. If you want a hard challenge where you have to bring everything you have to it, your intelligence, your heart, your head, your effort, your sweat, this is something that will help you grow. But more than that, you have to step beyond your class. You have to step beyond your gender. You have to step beyond your ethnicity and your culture. You have to build relationships based basically on love with a sense of service. You're not going out there to be the, the great hero 
or the great leader. You, you'd be going out there to be a servant. The world has enough leaders. Everybody wants to be a leader. Everybody wants to be a UX leader. How about some UX servants? Who are you going to serve with your UX? Right? What's the most beautiful service you could put yourself into through your own beautiful UX work? Stepping beyond ourselves this way touches into something which is precious, precious, precious in Indian cultural heritage, the sense of transcendence, the sense of being greater than one's culture, one's ethnicity, one's gender, and so forth, touching into what it really means to be a one-world family, touching into something authentically transcendent about yourself. Now, I propose to you, if you could do that, and all of the other bother points, I would certainly call you a genius. So, if you're interested in this, come find me. There's opportunities to get involved through Amachi Labs, just visiting, field visits, volunteering, internships, MTech programs, PhD programs, and if you have what it takes, research and teaching. If you just want to say hi, please come find me afterwards. It'll be a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.